Today we're talking about automation within Pro Tools. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to do basic automation like volume, pan, mute, stuff like that. But I'm also gonna teach you guys how to automate any parameter within a plugin using the Power Claw. And then I'm also gonna show you my favorite way to do volume automation, which is gonna save you guys a lot of trouble throughout your mixing sessions going forward. So if you guys want to learn all this, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we are talking about automation within Pro Tools. So if you are new to recording or mixing, you may be asking yourself, well, what is automation? Well, automation is just like it is in any other industry. It's basically allowing you to go in and set parameters to make things happen automatically. So for example, we can go in and set volume automation for a volume fader to go up or down at a specific point in the song, okay? So you can hard code that into the software, if that makes sense. And I'm actually gonna show you how to do that in this tutorial. So not only can you automate volume, but you can automate mute, you can automate pan, you could pretty much automate any parameter in almost any plugin. So the possibilities are endless. And before we get into this full tutorial, I do want to mention I have a link popping up in the top right corner now to my Pro Tools training playlist. So this playlist contains videos ranging from beginner to advanced. And if you guys want to get better at using Pro Tools, definitely check out this playlist after this video. So with that being said, let's get into this Pro Tools automation example. All right, so for this automation example here, we are gonna use this piano instrument track here, which the instrument track will give you more options than a audio track. For example, if I click where it says clips here, so you have all these options in here and pretty much all this stuff can be automated. All right, so if I went down to an audio track here, like this guitar is an audio track, you'll see that we have things like volume, mute, and pan, so pretty basic things. So what we want to do if we wanted to automate the volume of this piano track here, we would not want to go down to MIDI volume. You don't really want to mess with MIDI automation, okay? You don't want to mess with MIDI volume, MIDI mute, MIDI pan, don't deal with those. Go straight down to the audio volume, audio mute, pan left and pan right. Those are the ones you want to deal with. So we're gonna to go to audio volume, and now you'll see on the track here, we get basically a line that we can modify. So there's a couple different ways you can go about writing automation. So we can highlight certain areas and pull up and down. So if I highlight this here and then I want to pull down, this will automate the level down right here. I can also go back in and bring it up. That'll automate it up. So that's kind of being like real strategic with it. Now I'm working on the grid here so I can, you know, really fine tune where I'm putting it at. So this is great to do automation this way if you are going to maybe automate something to get louder at a specific area, like right on the downbeat. So maybe you want something to get louder right at the chorus. This is a great way to do it using this method. Now, if we want to gradually automate something, uh, we could go to the hand tool here, which actually creates a little finger, and we can put in dots. So for example, I could put a dot in here and I could put a dot in here. Now here's the little caveat here. So if I only want to automate this space here, so these two bars right here, I need to have little dots before and after the places I want to actually modify because watch what happens if I move this one here. See, it's taking the whole entire back end of it up here, which maybe I don't want to modify this. So let me control Z that. So maybe I wanna put a dot like right after it here. So now if I modify this dot here, see it's only adjusting before this point here and everything after it is you know, staying the same. So you gotta kinda of think about that. So I would put a point here. So maybe I want to bring this down. So that's kinda of how you wanna draw on your automation that way. And you can get the pencil tool and draw on some crazy stuff here. So this is the pencil tool here. And of course we have some different options here. You can freehand it, you can make a line, you could do a triangle. 
Uh, the random option is actually kind of cool. So I can just kind of just go from left to right straight over this line. So check this out. So it kind of just draws in random automation. So this feature is actually really cool if you're working with canned hi-hats, all right? So hi-hats actually sound pretty robotic most of the time if you're just, you know, putting them in from some sort of drum sequence or whatever. So you can actually use this random um, automation here and draw it in like this, and it'll make the hi-hat hits just a little bit different each time. So it sounds a little more human-like, all right? So I'm gonna control Z that. But as you can see under the pencil tool here, you have all these different, you know, options to write in automation. I don't use any of these, but they're here if you want to use them. I mean, I guess I do use random for hi-hats, but pretty much everything else I don't use. I pretty much stick with like the hand tool here and draw in lines like you just saw there. Or I'll just stay on the smart tool and I'll highlight specific areas like this and I'll, you know, drag up or down like that, okay? So just to show you that the automation actually works here, I'll just play you this piano passage from, you know, from measure three to the end of it here, and you'll see that this actually does what we wrote in. All right, so let's give it a listen. All right, cool, so there you go. That is how you write in volume automation. Now, if we were to go to something like mute, the exact same thing here. Now, the only difference between mute is that you have basically an on and off. So if you look at this here, currently mute is off. So if I was to highlight this here and I pull it down, it'll say muted, okay? And if I pull back up, it says not muted. All right, so that's basically a on and off state. So you're gonna be either all the way up or all the way down. And then for other parameters where there's levels in between like volume or your pitch bend, like for MIDI, you'll have levels in between, okay? So those are really the two different ways that you can use automation, all right? So I wanna give you one awesome tip for using volume automation that will make your sessions a lot better. So as you know, if you're familiar with automation, when you write automation on a fader there, you lose control of that fader in the mix window. If I was to adjust the volume fader in the mix window after I wrote an automation, it wouldn't work right. It would just go back to where it is on this line. And that is annoying. <laughs> so here's what I do. So I'm gonna go back to the actual volume automation here. We're gonna control Z this here and just gonna get rid of all the automation I wrote in. Get rid of that. Okay, so we got rid of all of our dots. We're back to even here. So what I like to do is I like to go add a plug in here I like to get the Slate VMR, so let's go find that. Now there's other plugins you can use for this. So the Slate VMR actually has a uh, trimmer plugin, which is it's really just a level plugin. So let me find it in here. Here it is. So in Pro Tools, to get access to the automation for specific parameters in a plugin, you want to use Power Claw. So on a PC, that is Control. Windows button, Alt. So you're gonna hold all three of those keys down at the same time, and then you're gonna click on the parameter that you wanna enable for automation. So I'm gonna click on the trim right here. You're gonna see this pops up this window here. So we're gonna do enable automation for 8-01. So now we just enabled this for automation. Now I'm thinking on a Mac, uh, it's probably control if there's a, if there's a Mac button. <laughs> and that would be option. I'm not really sure, so I apologize for not knowing that. But anyway, so if I close this here, you're gonna see when we go back down to our uh, piano track here, we go down to this option here. Check this out here, virtual mix rack. It shows up in here and you see A-01. Now we have access to this here. This is gonna be that actual trim knob. So if I was to start uh, you know, writing an automation, let's just write in some you know, automation here, bring it down do that. Okay, so I'm going to play this for you and then just, you know, check out this trim knob here as I play it. Let's give it a listen.
All right, pretty nifty, huh? So the cool thing about doing it this way is that if you use a, you know, a volume plugin like this and you put it as the last insert on your track here, then you can use this in place of your actual volume fader in your mix window, and then you don't have to worry about losing control of it. So in my mind, this is the best way to go about doing volume automation, all right? So this is how you do automation within Pro Tools. I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I love making this content for you, and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later, and peace out.